Imagine you're fighting another player in Minecraft. You both have the same gear and the same weapon. Now, what if I asked you, who wins this fight? A lot of people's natural answer would be the person who got the first hit. And while in some cases that is correct, a majority of the time it isn't. In most even fights in Minecraft, it's actually decided by who gets the most hits. This is commonly done by comboing, and in this video, I, along with someone who's way better at the game than me, are going to teach you about the art of the combo. Enjoy. So, what is a combo in Minecraft? No, it's not fries and a drink along with your burger at McDonald's, but it's essentially hitting the enemy more times than they can hit you, and essentially making it so that they can't hit you while you hit them. Now, there are multiple uses for combos. For example, knocking people off the map. Low ground. Man, it doesn't matter. Yep. Ooh. Doing a lot of damage to them. You do some like really good movement. Yeah. Ooh, okay, that was good. Yeah. Clips for your YouTube montage. There are also multiple types of combos, like snowball combos, where you use a snowball to hit your opponent before they can hit you, which launches them up into the air so you can hit their feet while they can't hit you. Funnily enough, Technoblade actually talked about this in his analysis of the Dream 1v1, and basically a quick explanation of it is that he used the Pythagorean Theorem to show that you want low ground in a Minecraft 1v1 because you can hit lower on their body as a result of the damage that a Minecraft player does coming from their head. Now, because of the way that knockback works in Minecraft Bedrock, if you hit someone into the air with a snowball, you can essentially keep them in a combo forever, assuming that they don't die. All of what I just said is fairly unnecessary to know, but pretty much using snowballs to start combos is actually a really, really good strategy. Use them that way if you have them. You can also use bows the same way to start combos in Bedrock Edition, but there are a few pros and cons to using bows as opposed to snowballs. The one glaringly obvious con to using bows over snowballs is the fact that you have to wait a little bit to charge up the bow before you can fire and actually use it in a way that's useful. With snowballs, you can literally just throw it if it's in your hand. However, if you're on the hive and trying to start a combo with a bow, a bow might actually be the better option because bows do stupid amount of damage on the hive for whatever reason, and you can get free damage on your opponent and then get them into a combo and win the fight easily that way. Also, Hive, fix your bows, please. They're so broken. Now, let's move on into the last method of comboing, which is literally just comboing without any help of snowballs or bows. This is probably the most difficult method of comboing in Minecraft Bedrock Edition, simply because there are a lot of things that go into it. For example, your movement, click speed, and aim all play a huge role in comboing. And while I'm decent at this method of comboing, I feel I figured I might as well bring in a good friend of mine to help explain it even more since, like I said in the intro, he's way better at the game than I am. Meet Declining Curve 9, one of the best Hive survival games players of all time, and overall Hive PvP god. He joins me today to explain things a little bit more in depth and provide examples way better than I can. What I'm gonna do is talk about the concept first and then include commentary of him explaining it. So first, let's address click speed, also known as CPS. It doesn't actually matter as much as people say it does. If you have the rest of the fundamentals down of PvP and comboing, you can literally keep people in a combo with just one click per second. I'm not even joking, watch this. I got one CPS. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> However, CPS does help with things like keeping people in the air in a high combo like this. Another thing that's crucial to keeping a combo alive is making sure that your cursor is on your opponent at all times. If you misclick once, you could be the one that ends up getting comboed here. Yeah, alright, so like, let's do this, right? So, I just like, pretend to go this way, right? Uh-huh, yep. Go cut, yeah? Made and me miss there, yeah. Hit when I did that. Uh-huh, yeah, exactly. So There's really not that much to say about aiming in comboing, other than just making sure that your crosshair is on them, and practice your aim, and make sure you can click on exactly what you want to click on, which is done by aiming. The last, and probably most fundamental part of comboing is your movement. For example, if you and another person are running straight at each other, and you're clicking at the same speed, nothing is going to happen other than you just 
hitting each other because there's no chance for either of you to miss your hit unless you literally don't click. Now, if you're fighting, you want your opponent to miss as many hits as possible. You do this by being unpredictable and strafing by moving left and right, either with your A and D keys, left or right on your controller, or left and right on your D-pad. However, like mentioned earlier, strafing can easily be countered by someone who has decent aim. However, there's more you can do, like W-tapping. Basically, it's where you repeatedly move forward every time you hit someone in a combo, which keeps them just out of reach. You could, like, try it. See? Yeah, yeah you got it. See, like, yeah. see, like, I'm not, you know, running forward, but, like, I'm in your um, range, but you're not in my range. Um, I have, like, a thing... Like my, my my FOV widens a little bit when I sprint, so like basically it's me tapping oh, yeah, sprint yeah. and W at the same time, so you guys can see how it like gets wider for a second and then it doesn't. So that's what W tapping is. It's just easier to combo them uh, that way, you know, because like you could tell like the first hit. Yeah. So see how you got knocked back like one and a half, right? Yeah. And now if I try to like do this, see how the second hit you only got knocked back one block. Yeah. That, yeah, yeah, that's that, really yeah. cool. There's also S tapping, which is similar to W tapping, but it's where you move backwards to stop your momentum. And what this does is basically makes your opponent take more knockback. Now, this isn't as useful for comboing because it generally knocks them far enough out of your reach that you can't hit them, but it's more useful for like knocking people off the map. You hit the person, and then while well, you still hold W in your sprint key, but you also press S instead of letting go of W. This resets your sprint, but I also see how you're taking an absurd I'm taking so much knockback here, which is crazy. Yeah, yeah. so like, like, I can't hold a combo on you for that long. Yeah. But like, as you can see, it just like, here, let's just get another angle. But see, like, I can't hold a combo for that long. But you just take so much knockback. I take knock so back. much knockback. Knock There's also seven tapping, which is where you combine a strafe with a W tap to make it so that the opponent has a difficult time hitting you by being out of their reach and also moving side to side, which means they have to focus on multiple things at once. You know when you strafe with A and D keys, right? Uh huh. You also want to W tap at the same time. It takes a lot of practice, but over time, this will make it so not only are you not just straight lining, so it's easy for the person to hit you, now it's harder for them to hit you, but you also W tap it so they're out of your range at the same time, right? I'm actually garbage at 7 tapping, so I got the Kanye Curse perspective of this to show you guys what it looks like. So that like, point. so like, let's just try this. So, okay, so basically this is what your opponent will look like when they're doing it. See, so like, you can kind of see I stop when I'm strafing. Yeah. And also makes you take a lot of knockback as well, but it's not, it's like in between W tap knockback and S tap knockback. So it's to the point where like you get knocked back j like farther than W tapping, but enough so where I can hold the combo, right? Exactly. That's yeah. for sure the best method. So with all that being said, I think you guys should know how to combo now. This is actually bad for me because I just told you guys all the secrets about Minecraft PvP, and now I'm going to get clapped whenever I play sub games against my viewers. Nonetheless, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I had a lot of fun learning the intricacies of Minecraft PvP with Declining Curve, so be sure to go drop him a sub and check out his channel. I would appreciate it a lot if you guys did. Also, if you're new to my channel, I ask that you subscribe. I'm really trying to make a bunch of high quality content like this every couple of days, so if you want to see more videos like these, be sure to subscribe and leave a like and leave a positive comment in the comment section. Either way, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out.